Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Wednesday night update. Checking in real quick uh, here about 9.41 p.m. California time, August 28th, 2024. Uh, latest activity on the globe. Most recent quake shows a 1.9 into Alaska. Uh, quite a bit of aftershock activity today uh, following that 6.1 earthquake here. Uh, just south of the, uh, well, actually a southern edge here of the Middle America Trench off the coast of El Salvador. Pretty strong earthquake shaking things up out here. Fairly shallow as well, so uh, uh, I'm sure if you're uh, around the uh, epicenter area, that quake was probably uh, felt broadly uh, in that region. But it uh, looks like maybe it was just off the coast here, about 50 miles or so, which limited any uh, specific major damage there uh, 33 kilometers deep again that's not a, a deep earthquake and uh, we're noticing a uh, quite a bit of aftershock activity following that 6.1 today a lot of fours a lot of threes coming into the picture as well we'll keep an eye on that region uh, of course uh, middle america trench is uh, no stranger to larger earthquakes out here 6.1 is actually very minimal uh, compared to what can uh, take place out here uh, looks like there was a 4.1 a little bit further up north here along the northern segment of the Middle America Trench as well following this activity. So got some broader scale activity ramping up here across this area of the plate boundary. Uh, doesn't look like we've seen any major adjustment here across the uh, Puerto Rico region or the, uh, the rest of the Caribbean plate. Uh, no major changes up north uh, into the uh, California area. Just uh, aside from the quake... Uh, today down south there, um, it's been mostly microquake activity here in California, aside from that 3.3 shaking things up there this morning, really early in the morning, about 5.30 or so in the morning. Uh, a lot of, a lot of um, microquake activity out here since then, but uh, really nothing major. Keeping an eye on it, obviously. Nevada did see quite a bit of swarming out here in a, uh, a couple different locations out here. Uh, two two or three separate locations showing uh, some elevated activity. About 63 earthquakes here in the last 24 hours. So uh, some continued uptick there across that area. That is very indicative there of strain out here against the San Andreas Fault, the plate boundary itself. So just be on guard, folks. I think we, uh, like I said, we've seen a lot of earthquake activity here recently around various locations of Southern California, inland as well, and in Nevada, and all of that there has got to be uh, uh, doing something there to the San Andreas Fault, the plate boundary. That's where most of the strain, that's where all the strain accumulates, right? And then you got these secondary faults and, and so on across the board. Uh, Oklahoma area got the, uh, goodness, a, a line of earthquake activity out here, it looks like. Outside of uh, Woodward, down through the uh, center portion of Oklahoma. Quite a few oil fields out here, if I recall. Uh, nothing big, just some ones and twos out there today. Uh, the Pecos, Texas area really ramped up as well with some threes out there, including a 3.9 uh, out there in the oil fields of this area. Nothing major going on across the rest of the country out here. Uh, look at the global picture. Uh, Alaska lighting up here slightly with a lot of red quake activity, indicating more recent earthquake movement here in the last hour. Got a 2.7 coming in way up north around the Brooks Range. At uh, one of the latest quakes there on the uh, map. Deeper activity once again across Tonga. New Zealand filling in slightly with some threes, but uh, really nothing major going on there for now. And uh, backing off a little bit in terms of larger scale potential out here across the T Taiwan area southward. Mostly microquakes up and down here the uh, across the Java Trench today. Uh, Greece area, well, it's spinning pretty fast. Let's go over here real quick and see what they had today. They, earlier this morning, I seen a 5.1 around the Crete area. Uh, it's been somewhat active out here across the plate boundary recently. Uh, nothing of any major earthquake movement, just some threes and twos. And today's at 5.1 stirring up there around Crete. Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on out there for now. South America area, uh, got uh, the typical mixed bag of earthquakes there into the Perchilli Trench. So... We'll keep an eye here on um, what's going on out here across the Middle America Trench. Uh, we'll see if we got any migration here overnight. A lot of times uh, activity will stir up down here across Mexico. And uh, this 
this plate boundary right here into the Gulf of California and really ramp things up here across the southern portion of the state. Uh, that hasn't happened yet, but uh, like I say, this earthquake occurred just about, uh, what, 10 hours or so ago. So we'll see what happens overnight. Let's see if we get any further uptick there across the area of Southern California. Space weather activity, not a whole lot popping out here, folks. Just uh, some sea flare activity from a far side sunspot. Look at that. Way out there on the eastern limb there. Looks like a fairly active region that we'll uh, be watching in the coming days here. Looks like uh, things might be on the uptick here soon. Right now, things are dropping. 10% chance there for X-Flare, M-Flare 55, C-Flare around 99% chance or so. Really nothing major uh, for now. But uh, we'll get a better look, better perspective of the sunspots way out on the eastern limb here in the coming days. Uh, I've seen some tornado activity. Goodness, all the storm chasers, um, you know, posting all these tornado videos from South Dakota. And it uh, looks like that threat remains overnight uh, with some tornado, pit tornado potential here. Uh, for early Thursday, early, early Thursday, and um, mainly across North and South Dakota, Dakota there for the uh, tornado potential, wind, and some hail threats in there as well. Looks like big time hail threat across that area for the remainder of the night. Here's the outlook during the day for Thursday. Uh, that severe weather should shift a little bit further to the east here across portions of Minnesota, St. Paul in there included. Uh, with a 2% chance of tornado probability. Wind and some hail threats out there as well in those distinct areas of severe weather concern. So a little bit happening out there, right, in terms of severe weather. Uh, seismograph stations out here, pretty quiet, folks. Not a whole lot going on here across the area. You know, these, uh, if you think about it, these plates are almost always in motion here. They're always just inching around, even if some of them may be a couple centimeters adjustment you know it's it uh, uh like i said we'll see what happens here with uh any type of change here following that larger scale event uh today because that's a decent earthquake that's a that's a uh you know a six pointer let's see what we got so far uh in terms of magnitude 6.0 and above uh so far this year i just want to double check this here real quick see what we have <clears throat> We haven't had any eight pointers yet, and that's what I've been chatting about here recently is the concern that we should have seen an eight pointer by now. Uh, we have one at least a year, once a year, uh, if not once a year, maybe every other year. So, uh, you know, two years. And the last eight pointer was back in 2021. So it's been three years now since we've seen an eight pointer. Uh, so far, 6.0 and above worldwide since January 1st there. We got, uh, well, we got about 69 earthquakes here of 6.0 and above. The largest magnitudes there being the uh, 7.5 into the western Japan area, right? You guys remember that? We've seen a lot of activity up there recently and around Taiwan as well. Putting a lot of strain up here against the subduction zone that the uh, Japanese folks are concerned about. But, uh, yeah, so far, um, the largest magnitude is going to be that 7.5. Secondary is going to be that 7.4 down here in the in the uh, Chile area. A couple large earthquakes around Taiwan, Peru. You know, it's uh, even that earthquake up here in the Cascadia. Well, that's shy of the Cascadia here. That's on the uh, northern edge of the Juan de Fuca Ridge. That uh, earthquake stirred up a storm of uh, smaller quakes in this area as well following that uh, event last July. So we'll just kind of keep an eye on things, folks. I think we're overdue for an eight-pointer. Uh, the question is, uh, who is up to bat? It could be California. It could be uh, anywhere. Um, just got to be on guard and make sure you guys have uh, some type of safety plan out there in terms of earthquake preparedness. We'll catch you guys back out here in the morning. Got a fairly eventful morning tomorrow, so I'll uh, be out here a little bit earlier with an update here for the uh, Thursday morning update. Have a good night, folks. Stay safe. And, uh, again, seismograph stations out here look quiet. There's a little spike coming in there to the uh, Cal State Bakersfield area. 
Uh, let's see here. It's going to be this region right here where they've seen uh, some twos throughout the day today and some ones. This is all aftershock sequence following that five pointer a couple weeks back now. So, but one thing I've noticed here today is increasing movement out in the Garlock Fault shear zone southward in this little piece of land here that's uh, got to be building up quite a bit of strain here. You can see it's like a, a left type of uh, arrow here that interchanges here with the San Andreas Fault. This area, got to watch this. That can give good indicators of uh, uh, how much strain is building up here, or at least uh, in terms of the uh, daily strain. If things are amplified out here, like we've seen today here, that's a uh, little bit interesting, to say the least, because we normally don't see too much earthquake activity out here, specifically in this region. But uh, we had a little, little bit of quake activity, 2.0 earlier this morning, uh, earthquake right now, 1.0. And any one of these could trigger, you know, the, the big one out here. Uh, you just you never know. It's not going to take a seven-pointer to trigger the big one. It could be uh, just all that, just that little two-pointer, right? Something that really tips the scale and unzip. There it goes. A big 8.1 out there on the southern branch. Um, it's going to happen, folks. The best thing to do is be prepared. That's not fear-mongering. It's, it's been in the works for quite a while. The question is, are we living in that future time period right now where we're going to see that happen in our life in our lifetime i think we are um too much time has passed we've been seeing too much earthquake activity out here around the region on a broad scale so uh now is a good time to be prepared uh we'll continue to keep an eye on it folks and uh check back in the morning see if we got any uptick going on through the night have a good one see you guys back out here in the morning stay safe